Hello, Zach Murphy here. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune to my channel today. In today's teaching, I'm going to continue my series on the book of Proverbs, and we're going to look at chapter 20 out of the King James Version. So before I go any further, let me open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word. Lord, I pray, Lord, that everybody watching us would be edified, that they'd be built up in you, Lord Jesus, for your glory. We give you all the praise, Lord, glory, and honor. In your name I pray. Amen. So if you would turn with me in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 20, we'll read verses 1 through 7. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. The fear of a king is the roaring of a lion. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be met. Uh, meddling. The slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in the harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim every one his own godness, uh, goodness, excuse me. but a faithful man who can find. The just man walketh in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. Obviously, in verse 1, we have something that is often debated by Christians, and that is, should you or should you not drink? And, you know, there is much discussion over this, and I realize there's people on here that, you know, are going to have different uh, opinions on this. And I just want to give some food for thought here, because I will say I see both sides to the argument. Um, you know, number one in the New Testament, let me say this here. Number one in the New Testament says for us not to be drunk with wine. And, you know, we're not to be, you know, intoxicated with anything as Christians. We are not to be. Um, we are to be people that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, people that are filled with the Holy Spirit. So, you know, one of the examples people often go to, they say Jesus turned water into wine. And he absolutely did. We see that recorded in the gospel. Um, and there is much debate on this, and I want to say this. Weddings in Cana were very much a religious ceremony. Number one, know that. And, you know, things such as fermented wine or intoxicated drink would have been strictly forbidden. Given that, there is grounds to believe that this wine that Jesus turned water into was not an intoxicating wine as, you know, we would have today. Again, I do see both sides to this matter. Um, there are many people today who sadly live their weekends getting drunk. And there are even those in the church who don't have a problem with this, who, you know, they'll go to the clubs on, you know, Friday, Saturday night and go up to church on Sunday. Um, and, you know, I do want to say this, you know, the church is open to anyone to come, but we don't want people to come and remain the same for years and years to come in the church. If so, then there's a problem with the message that's being preached. If someone's coming to the church, there should be change. Sometimes change is very fast for people, and sometimes it's very progressive. It's very, you know, gradual with people. Everybody's different how the Lord works with them. But, you know, the way our culture is today with making drinking as okay is something that, you know, Christians should be against. You don't need to have alcohol involved to have a good time. Um... Let me say that. You don't need to. It, it's ridiculous. Um, my personal conviction is I do not drink. Um, that's just my conviction on, on the matter. Um, and, you know, I know some people will say, well, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, responsibly isn't a problem. And again, I see both sides to that. Um, again, my personal conviction is not to drink. Um, and, you know especially, especially, you know, let's say, you know, you're a Christian, you're with somebody that is a former alcoholic. Um, why would you want to be a stumbling block for them? Um, for something that, you know, they just got delivered through by, you know, they just got saved from, they just became a Christian and they were someone that was struggling with, you know, alcohol addiction. God delivered them from that. Why would you, you know, just have a you know, one serving of whatever in moderation. Why would, you know, that's kind of possibly open the door for you to be a stumbling block for that person. 
And there's many other examples via stumbling block. But I would say my my personal conviction is not to drink. Um, that's just my personal conviction on it. Um, and, you know, there's going to be many people out there, many well-respected um, people of God that, you know, would have a little bit of a difference of opinion on there. But number one, know this, that we are called to be filled by the Holy Spirit. We are called to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Um, that is so vitally important. In Isaiah chapter 28, verse 7, it says, But they also have erred through wine, and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink, and they err in vision. They stumble in judgment. You know, these things can be very dangerous. You know, um, being drunk with, you know, things can be very dangerous. And we see, you know, as I record this, because I record these videos ahead of time when they premiere, I'm recording this right before the 4th of July of 2024. You know, I just read in the newspaper that, you know, different state police um, across the country are going to have safety checkpoints, and that's so important because it saves lives. Um, it's so sad the amount of people in our country that struggle with alcohol addiction, um, people that are functional alcoholics. Um, these are people that desperately need help. Um, you know, I believe help, you know, can number one come through prayer and deliverance through the power of Jesus Christ, as well as there are great programs out there alongside of that to help people, you know, recover through that. Um, it's so important, and you know, my biblical stance on it is to not drink, but, you know, I would encourage you to, you know, Look in this for yourself in the Word of God. See this for yourself in the Word of God. Don't just take my word for it, but look in, in the Word of God yourself. Um, verse uh, 2 here is talking about the fear of the king. You know, it's talking about the king's wrath. And it's foolishness to do things that provoke a king. And at the same time, there are, are people who provoke the king of kings, Jesus Christ. Um, people who live in sin. Um, you know, we are to be people that honor our King, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And, you know, notice in the book of Proverbs, when it refers to a king, it is often a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. Verse 3 talks about it being an honor for a man to cease from strife. And, you know, we should always strive to live in peace with people and try to resolve a matter with godly character and in love. Um, go with me to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 5. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 5. Let your moderation be known to unto all men. The Lord is at hand. It is so important. It is so important for us to be people that are gentle with one another. That's another word for the word gentle. It's moderation. Also, Proverbs tells us time and time again to not be lazy. Um, because simply people that are lazy, they will not eat. And we are to be people that have a good work ethic. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 tells us for us to do all things unto the glory of God. So no matter what your job is, whether you like it or dislike it, or you have good and bad days at your job, you're to do everything to the glory of the Lord. And sometimes it is hard to do that. Many people will also try to proclaim, as Proverbs tells us, that they are a good person. That they are a good person. But what does the Bible tell us, especially in the book of Romans? Because the book of Romans hammers us out very well. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have fallen sin, they certainly are not good. There is no one that is good except Jesus Christ. Additionally, if, if we have the righteousness of Jesus given to us, then we need to be people of integrity. And it says in Proverbs chapter 20 here, verse 7, that, you know, a person of integrity, their children are blessed. You know, when you live a life of integrity before your children, that will be an influence to your children. They will be people that walk in integrity. As you raise up a child, as they are to be 
risen up in the things of God. And there is such, sadly, a lack of integrity in the church today. Um, you know, there are certain leaders that have, that have fallen recently this year. Um, number one, pray for them. Pray for their restoration. Pray for them. But, you know, we need to be people that stand for integrity. We need to be people that stand for integrity. Continuing on, Proverbs chapter 20, verses 8 through 16. A king that sitteth in his throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin? Diverse weights and diverse measures, both of them are like an abomination to the Lord. Even a child known by his doings, whether he work be pure and whether it be right, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made both of them. Love not sleep, lest thou become property, or poverty, excuse me. Love not sleep, lest thou become poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. It is not, it is not, saith the buyer, but when he is gone away, then he boasteth. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Take his garment, that is surety for a stranger. Take a pledge from him for a strange woman. Jesus is going to return one day with eyes of fire. He will judge and Jesus will separate righteous from unrighteousness. And every time, again, we see a reference to a king in the book of Proverbs, we need to see if that is a shadow of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is revealed in every, in every book of the Bible, Old and New Testament, especially the Old Testament. He is revealed, he is foreshadowed in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament we see everything he fulfilled. We also need to have a desire to have a pure and clean heart. In our own strength, we cannot be pure and clean. It is only through going before God, going before the throne room of grace, and obtaining mercy. And that's something we have to do every day, because no matter how long you've been a Christian, you are not excused from you know, having temptations come your way and, and to slipping into something. And the most important thing is that you get back up, repent, bearing forth fruits of repentance and pressing forward towards the prize with your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. We also need to use our heads that God has given us. You know, people are to seek after God. We need to also make a covenant with our eyes and with our ears because they are the gateways to our minds. What we see with our eyes and what we hear is a gateway to our mind. If we go to the book of Job, in chapter 31, verse 1, I have made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I look upon a maid? You know, it is so important that, especially in today's world, with all the evilness in the world, that we make a covenant with our eyes and with our ears, that we guard them, that we are careful to what we allow in. And especially, you know, parents, you ought to be extra careful with your children because the enemy is working overtime. We are called to have the right balance of sleep and being awake because, again, a lazy person will live in poverty. And often when people are shopping, and this talks about a buyer here in Proverbs, when people are shopping and they think they don't need something and then they see that it's on special and then they go out and they're like, oh, look at this nice thing I bought. Um, you know, we should be good stewards of the money God has blessed us with because God is our provider. And we should be good stewards of the money he has blessed us with. And, and that means, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, going out and just spending, you know, on a spree. We should be cautious with our money. We should be good stewards of our money. Also, people that speak knowledge, and again, the word says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. People that speak knowledge are a precious jewel to the Lord. God loves those who speak wisdom. Continuing on to verses 17 and 21. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Every purpose is established by counsel, and with God, with good advice, make war. He that goeth about as a table bearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp 
shall be put out in obscure darkness. An inheritance may have gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. There are people who gain money by, you know, um, you know, lying or um, more plainly by fraud. And you know, it might seem good in the beginning, but in the end, they will be judged by God. They will be judged by God. And you know, um, people like that, they need to repent. They need to repent before God right now and turn from that wickedness. And back in Proverbs 9, verse 17, it tells us, Proverbs 9, verse 17 says, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. It might seem good at first, but it will be sour in the end. The Bible also says that rulers, this is talked about those in leadership, should not go to war without consideration and planning. Um, Jesus said something interesting here in Luke, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 31. Or what king going to war, or excuse me, or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and considereth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. You know, it's very important here that the Bible tells us, you know, that a wise king would not go to war without considering everything as a whole, the logistics of it. You know, there are different, you know, um, kings in the Bible that went after different countries by the leading of God, um, and that was God dealing with specific people at a specific time in the Old Covenant. But know this, that, you know, Christians are to be people that seek and pray for peace. Um, you know, it should grieve our hearts when we see war going on around the world um, right now, especially the time we are living in. Um, it is very sad the different situations we have going on in the world. We need to be praying for peace. We need to be praying for peace and seeking peace because the word says, Blessed are those who are peacemakers, for they are the children of God. Again, Proverbs also gives us a very clear warning from gossip, and we are to flee from it. And, you know, I see so much right now um, among politics right now, people getting involved with, um, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with the political situation for 2024. And let me say this. Here's my counsel to you. Number one, as Christians, we need to stand for good godly principles. And number two, the kingdom of God is greater than any political candidate and greater than um, any political platform. We need to be about the Father's business right now. We need to not be getting distracted by this or by that or trying to predict the outcome of this or that. We need to be established in the Word of God in the deepest place of prayer right now for our country. In the deepest place of prayer. Lastly, here it says that there are those who honor their parents, and um, there is blessing for those who honor those parents. But those who are um, cursing their parents and dishonoring their parents, there is a curse for them. Um, we see that mentioned numerous times in the Old Testament, to honor our parents, and we will receive blessing. That is so very important. And to wrap up Proverbs 20, let's look at verses 22 through 30. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Diverse weights are an abomination to the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy, and after vows to make inquiry. A wise king scattereth the wicked, and bringeth the wheel over them. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. Mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upheld in by mercy. The gold of young men, the glory of young men, excuse me, is their strength, and the beauty of old men is their gray head. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil. So do stripes the inward part of the belly. 
a lot being said here. We are not to go after people in revenge. God will take care of those things, and instead we are called to love our enemies and to pray for them. God is also against unbalanced judgment and unrighteous judgment. We know that God is the one and only true judge. Our steps are to be guided by the Lord, and we are to seek God at all times and let His Word lead us. We are to be in fellowship with this Word every single day, whether it is convenient or not convenient. We are to be led by this Word, this Word here every single day. Every single day we are to be led by the Word of God alone. Also, it says here, don't make vows that you cannot keep. Do not make vows that you cannot keep. Do not make promises you cannot keep. We are to be people of integrity. Um, and these vows can go for, you know, promises in the workplace. Um, and even vows of marriage. We are to honor the vows and promises we make. And in regards here to verse 27, it says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. I want to read here from J. Vernon McGee. Um, with his commentary through the Bible. Again, J. Vernon McGee, and I highly recommend him. He writes, and I, you know, I often don't quote from commentaries, but I really loved how this was written. The spirit of man is the candle, or lamp of the Lord, Jehovah. Notice, it is called the candle or lamp of Jehovah, not the light of Jehovah. The spirit of man is only the lamp, the vessel that holds the light. Man is just a lamp until we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We don't become a light. Remember the parable of the ten virgins. Five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. They were just lamps. Without the oil, they could not have light. That is so true. Without oil, oh, excuse me, oil, you cannot have the light. And the oil is the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. And you can be a light that shines. As children to the king, we are to be loyal to him because we are all about representing the king in excellence and we are to represent his kingdom well. And people often talk about the glory days when they were young and then people when they are older talk about their gray hairs. And you know, when we're young, we have all this strength, um, all this energy, and we should use it wisely. We should be good stewards of our time and of our energy and ask God to help us with that. And, you know, gray hair shows that you have experience. Um, that is so important because, you know, people that are older have experience. They have wisdom. They've walked through life. And, you know, it's so important for there to be a good balance in every local church of, you know, older elders encouraging and discipling the younger adults through life. It's so important. And, again, verse 30 is a parallel to Jesus when it talks about stripes. Um, being a cleansing and in verse um, in Isaiah 53 verse 5 it says by his stripes he was wounded for us the chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes we are healed Jesus bore it all on the cross for us he paid the ultimate sacrifice for us on the cross and we can be so thankful so blessed for it that is all I have for his teaching. I hope this is blessed and encourage you. And let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. I pray, Lord, everybody watching this was edified. They were built up in you, Lord Jesus, for your glory. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, thank you for watching this. God bless you and have a great week. And be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Okay, and if you would like to learn more about me and check out my other teachings as well as blog posts, you can go to my website, steadfast-ztm.com. I post on there regularly, and you can also subscribe to a newsletter. There is a page there to look at missionaries. I would encourage you to donate to as well, as well as other links to other teachers of the Word of God that I personally follow myself and I'll encourage you to follow as well and there's some other resources on there for Christian living and studying the Word of God. Personally, I have a devotional available on the fruits of the Spirit. The print version is currently $7 and the ebook version is $2. I highly encourage you to check that out. It is a very um, fundamental teaching and it's very easily laid out for you to understand and apply to your life.
Also, I would like to encourage you to pray for CMI Global. I'm a part of that ministry fellowship there. I'm credentialed through them, and CMI Global is a ministry fellowship that helps equip and establish and strengthen the local church. So please join me in praying for leadership as well as provision and blessing for all the other ministers and churches within CMI Global. And the website, uh, cmiglobal.info, is available for more information or if you would like to donate to them. I'd also like to talk to you about the School of Discipleship through EndureHardship.org slash SOD, which is where you can check it out. I attended this program, and I'll be a graduate of this two-year program as of May, at the end of May 2023. If you are looking for sound Christian teaching and discipleship, I highly encourage you to check this program. You can do it from anywhere. They do weekly Zoom meetings for you. If you enroll in the teachings are awesome. Um, they will help strengthen your walk with the Lord and help you build a lifestyle of discipleship, which is very important. This is for anybody, whether or not you want to be in ministry or not. I believe this is crucial for any Christian. There is just so much given in this school here. It has touched my life, and I know it has touched others, and it's... Uh, led by Dr. J.P. Price. You can find out more about this school here. I'd highly encourage you to check it out. It's very affordable, very reasonable. Again, I would highly encourage you to check this out, and I'm sure it will be a blessing for you as well. And share it with others. You might know somebody that wants to go through discipleship or go through some training to be better prepared for ministry. This is the place to do it at, and they definitely, Dr. J.P. Price and the other instructors with this program do a very good job of pouring into all the students I know has helped me, and I trust it will also help others and be a blessing to others, and God is definitely using this program here.